a similar mood where we do not see Krishna as God. So you treat him as a son, you treat him as a lover, you treat him as the uh, friend, like this, without any seeing him, without any reservation of seeing him as God. So if you do Vaidhi Bhakti, generally, we are always conscious that he is the Lord. We must do this because he's Supreme Lord. We must worship him like because he's Supreme Lord. So that creates a reverence in the worship, even if it's Krishna. And so something like the um, reverence that they have in Mathura and Dwarka for Krishna. And when we uh, follow after the Ragapaka Bhaktis, Bhaktis, then um, that becomes much, much weaker. This doesn't mean that if, uh, the Raga Yuga rejects scripture, it cannot do that, but that idea that we're treating with great respect, uh, that diminishes. So, it is important to understand that it is not just in Madhurya. Raga Yuga could refer to any of the different rasas. Hmm? So we may have Sakya Rasa, Salya Rasa, and of course we have Vaya Rasa as well. So, hmm. so what is the qualification for Raga Yuga? And so the basic qualification is the <coughs> simply a very strong desire to get that similar type of Bhava, that raga that is found in Brahma. That is the qualification. So technically then, if one from the very beginning of sadhana had such a greed, he could practice raga good, that's his qualification. <laughs> technically speaking. Uh, and it may arise in that way also, usually due to great association from the very beginning with the raga of the or from a previous lifetime. Many, many developed in the very beginning of that intense uh, rocket. And here's a little detail. The appearance of that greed is indicated when the intelligence does not depend on the rules of scripture and logic. After realizing to some degree the sweetness of their love through the process of hearing from the scriptures, so ultimately, Raga Lu is also based on scriptures. <laughs> we have to hear the Bhagavatam. We have to hear about the pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan. And by that, huh, one develops a uh, appreciation of the sweetness of those early pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan. And then the uh, greed develops. <coughs> so in this way, the uh, use of intelligence to do our uh, devotional service becomes less, and that uh, attraction to Krishna and following after the happiness of love, that becomes the main impetus in Raja Bhakti. So therefore we have hearing past time, we appreciate the sweetness, and then we start developing the greed with a decrease in scriptural regulation. It doesn't mean that zero scriptural regulation, but the dependence on the scripture for following the rules decreases. Mm -hmm. But we see that in the great Raja Bhakti, they're also listening, they're hearing scripture. <laughs> so they don't, in that sense, reject scripture. There is also, in Vaidhi Bhakti, it is not without spontaneity, because when one gets to the Baba stage, especially, we cannot say that the, uh, and Prem, of course, that even the person doing Vaidhi Bhakti has no spontaneity, certainly they do. So it's not that they're just following rules and regulations after they see Krishna or Vishnu in the Nivala stage. Huh? They have great attraction also. But there is that influence of Vaidhi in the sense that they give regard and reverence to Krishna as Supreme Lord. So that's the difference that happens huh? if we do Vaidhi Rakti as opposed to Rakti. So, those qualified for body bhakti are dependent on the rules of scripture, on the rules of scripture, and favorable use of logic until the appearance of Baba bhakti. So, they become less dependent or they're not dependent when it comes to Baba because we directly meet the Lord and not think, well, the scriptures say that, the scriptures say that. No, they spontaneously do, but still the idea of reverence is there. And which is going to carry over from the earlier stage of silence. So, that reverence creates the 
Therefore, there is spontaneity in value of T as you go upwards. Okay? And also at Raghunuga, it's not a complete rejection of scripture. So we shouldn't think that either of them are true, that there's no spontaneity in value, or that Raghunuga rejects scripture and is completely spontaneous. No, it's a sadhana also. So therefore, there's also dependence on scripture. In the Sutra of the Greed Manifest, in and for attaining Bhava, similar to that of the Rajabhasis, and uh, he develops an inclination for Raga Bhakti, the practitioner of Raga Bhakti does not depend any longer on scriptural rules and logic. However, whenever that greed has appeared, it is understood that the person must have studied the scriptures in order to attain that greed. It is also necessary to study scriptures in order to understand the proper sadhana form of Raga Bhakti. So Raga Nuga Bhakti also follows scripture. <laughs> There's a process of Raga Nuga Bhakti. It's scriptural. It's not just some concocted process. So to understand how to perform Raga Nuga, one also has to go to the scripture. Yeah. So therefore, the, uh, we can't say that Raga Nuga Bhakti rejects scripture in any way. In fact, uh, if the Raga Nuga Bhakti doesn't accept the very definition of pure bhakti as uh, you know, Anya Sunya except he doesn't accept that verse, that he can't even do Raga Nuga Bhakti. So, we have to have a dependence on scripture from the very beginning anyway. But uh, as one goes on, um, <coughs> the inspiration of performing his bhakti becomes uh, the activities of the philosophy. So what are the activities? Many of the activities will be the same. But there is some prominent activity. Remembering the Vrindavan form of Krishna as near associates with information for service similar to one's own, observing oneself in many topics related to them, one should always live in Raja. So we are hearing the pastimes, remembering them, etc. Uh, and then living in Vrindavan. So it's all concentrated on Krishna and his Vrindavan pastimes. Uh, what this means is that uh, here, uh, who have inclination for service similar to one's own. So one has an inclination for Sakya Rasa, and then one hears the childhood pastimes of Krishna in relation to the Kavar boys in Balaram in the uh, middle chapters, let's say from chapter, uh, ah, chapter 10 to 25 or so, from that area we get the uh, Sakya Rasa. <coughs> And if we're interested in Vasali Rasa, then we'll hear the early childhood pastimes from chapter 2 onwards, and do the Tanner Prabhu like that. And we're interested in Guru Rasa, and then we cover the chapters from, let's say, 29 to 35 or 36, like that. And Rasa Lila chapters, etc. So, uh, depending on one's inclination, then one will listen to the different pastimes from the different parts of the Bible and Death Canto. So, that we're hearing, remembering, and uh, uh, so these are some principal activities. Huh? This doesn't mean that other activities are uh, not there because we see the great Goswamis uh, and they do deity worship and doing japa, etc. Huh? So these are quite common uh, in uh, the development of Ravana. So that's what we see many people who go to Vrindavan and they live there and then they start practicing Ravana in this way. <coughs> So, uh, the hearing and the remembering are to become completely absorbed in the mood of these Rajabhasis. So we can do our service following after them. So, what happens if you want to draw into the Bhakti, but you cannot live in Vrindavan? <laughs> If possible, one should live physically in the place where Krishna lives, such as Vrindavan. One cannot do that to the persons who live there. <coughs> so therefore, other people from outside of Vrindavan can also do Raghavan Bhakti. And think of the Dhamma and the meditation. So, there are two aspects to the service. Following after the inhabitants of Raja, one should perform service in one's physical body and in one's siddha body with a desire for a particular bhava. 
in the external service of the body, so we do many of the same angas as in Vani Bhakti, but inspiration, of course, is you know, uh, following after the happiness of Raja. But the external activities may be quite similar. Huh? Like worshiping the deity, doing seva for the deity, cooking, uh, making flower garlands, making dresses for the deity. The same activities can go on. Those are the external activities. And then we have the Siddha body. Of Siddha body does not actually mean that's your actual spiritual body because you only get that body when we're in body and prayer. So this is a practice body more or less. <laughs> we're still in sadhana, so we don't have a Siddha body yet. Huh? But we're expecting to get one, according to our Baba. So if you're uh, in Sakta Rasa, then you would expect to get a Kaupar boy body. If you're in uh, Manjari Baba, then you get a Manjari Baba uh, body. If you're in Vasai Baba, then you get an elder Gopar Gopi body. Uh, so we meditate on those bodies even now as a practice to actually assume it. <coughs> As I said in Bhagavad Gita, whatever you think of when you die, you attain that in your next lifetime. That's, of course, material body. So the same with the spiritual body. <laughs> the more you think of your spiritual body now, that's what you attain later on. So you concentrate on particular rasa with a particular form, and then when you get the bhava, then that happens. So, uh, it's a, a, a use, we use the meditation process to start developing our um, spiritual body more quickly. That's what Rajamura does. So that's the Siddha body. So what does it mean to do service? We meditate. And that remembering process is there, remembering, hearing, and living for God. So the remembering process then, when you're remembering, then you start to do your service with your body, with that spiritual body. So you just sit where we serve the deity now, we do different things. When you're in your uh, meditation, and then you do similar activities and thinking of yourself in that particular body. So I'm a cowherd boy and I'm serving Krishna by playing with him in the fields or uh, doing this with Krishna or coming home with him, herding the cows, etc. So you think of yourself in a cowherd boy body and go along with Krishna in your meditation. <laughs> and this is often accompanied by japa. You're doing your japa and you're meditating like this. <laughs> Uh, this is from Vishnu's commentary. Accordingly, one should perform mental service in one's Siddha Rupa, following after the examples of Sri Radha, Lakya, Vishaka, Sri Rupa, and Jari, and So, this is for Madhuri Rasa, which is Madhuri Rasa. And you follow after Radha and the Sakis and the Manjaris. Uh, in our summer, that generally uh, the only, mm, not the only, but the, the main emphasis is upon the Manjari Baba, following after Rupa Gosami, who is Rupa Manjari. So, Generally, there's some pradaya. That's the only one they teach now. This is taking a manjari form, rupa, and meditating on that. And certainly within rupa manjari, so that's what the babajis do, and not certain goswamis. In one's physical body, one should perform service using one's body, following that purpose of rupa, so not in goswami situated in Vrindavan. So just as they did japa, study scripture, wrote scriptures, uh, worship the deity and do so many things. So with the physical body, it's a similar type of activities, which is very similar to the body body activities. Yeah? Here you chant for members of the family, of the members of the archana, etc. Bowing down before the deity, start manualizing the dhamma, and everything like this. This is all part of the physical activities. Yeah? With Ruba, it's not an also good. So it's not completely internal. We have the physical aspect also. And then, so one doesn't reject the activities of the physical body in the state. So we'll follow after the physical body, um, doing 64 angas as much as possible or favorable. And at the same time, then we also do service in the Siddha body, where we identify ourselves as a go for your copper boy or whatever. And we we'll follow after the next so we'll Parallel services physically. <laughs> so we have to occupy ourselves quite a lot with many things throughout the day. So this just shows that the sadhana that we're doing is not the actual siddha day, not that man <coughs> in Baba's day. It's nitya siddha. And somehow that Baba manifests our form as 
in Baba stage when you see Krishna. So this is it's called the Siddha Deha, but it's not actually the real manifestation that will take place later when we have the eye, proper eyes to see Krishna in Baba stage. So the shadow form. The discriminating practitioner should accept the Angas, which were mentioned in body bhaktis, is a serious enemy of Angas of Raghavan Gula Bhakti. So, if we begin Raghavan Gula Bhakti, we do not reject the activities in body bhakti. So, they go on. So, externally, even, one may not detect whether the person is a Raghavan Gula Bhakti or body bhakti because it's <laughs> he's, he may do the same activities as a person doing body bhakti, even though he's in Raghavan Yoga, because you're not seeing him doing his internal sadhana. So if you see externally, then you would uh, maybe confuse the two people and you may not see the difference. So, what are the types of Raghavan Yoga? Of course, we get the Madhurya Bhava, which takes two forms, when which one directly uh, enjoys with Krishna as a gopi, a sakhi, or uh, Indirectly, who simply desire the mood of these uh, people in Madhurya Rasa. So that's more like the Manjari Baba, where Manjaris do not directly contact Krishna, they serve the Sakis and Krishna. And they directly enjoy Krishna. Now, what happens to the person in Vaidhi Bhakti who worships Radha and Krishna? <coughs> A person who serves in the path of body bhakti with desire for conjugal relations with the Lord in a high position, but without desire for the Guru set of love after some time becomes a queen in Dwarka. <laughs> so that's the Vaidhi Bhakti. Yeah? And you don't aspire for the Gopi type of love, but you want conjugal rasa, so then you would worship Krishna and Dwarka, and then you become a queen in Dwarka. That's your position. Yeah? But and then there's also a um, Another uh, exception to that. What if we worship Radha and Krishna in Bhagavad Bhakti? So we have a desire not for Dwarka, but for Radha, Krishna, and Vrindavan as a cowherd boy. But we do Bhagavad Bhakti. So Vishnu Chakravarti answers that we cannot go to Dwarka because we're worshiping Radha, Krishna, and Vrindavan. But because we do Bhagavad Bhakti, we cannot get to that Vrindavan with the no on reverence. So there's another Vrindavan. It's called Aishwarya Goloka. In, in the inner side, it's called Goku. And this is where Krishna lives, and nobody sees him as a Supreme Lord. So that's where you go with Raghavanda Bhakti. Finally, you get the Goku of the center. Around that, there's another area called Aishwarya Goloka. It's also covered by Krishna, and all the Gopis, etc. But they also see the Supreme Lord. <laughs> So if you do Vaidhi Bhakti and you go to anywhere to Radha Krishna, then you go to Bhava and you get to Prema, then you go to Aishwari and Goloka Bhakti. And we should worship Krishna, could be Madhuri Rasa, could be Sakya Rasa, whatever, but then you also have this regard for Krishna as Supreme Lord, or some honor of Krishna also. So that's the destination for a worshiper of Vrindavan Krishna with uh, Vaidhi Bhakti. So as I mentioned, uh, of the Madhurya Bhava is not the only type of Raghavan Yoga. Practicing the devotee's duty for parental, friendly, or servant relations to perform bhakti with indications of the behavior of Lord Nanda, Subal, or others uh, to follow after those particular devotees and particular rasas, and it's also called Raghavan Yoga. Okay, so the Vatsalya uh, Rasa, whatever, as the Vallabha's um, followers do. Um, there was a Sakya line somewhere in Bengal. Some of the devotees had started a Sakya Rasa line also, but it seemed to have died out. <laughs> Nasya, I haven't seen any, but there's Krishna has little servants in Vrindavan, so they serve. <laughs> and he's the master, they're the servant, but it's all covered by sweetness. So, what is the cause of Ravi? How does it arise? The mercy of Krishna and his devotees is the only cause of the thing of Radha Bhakti. Some call this type of devotion Pushti Marga, so that's what they well, always call it some type of Pushti Marga. Okay. How does it arise? Mercy of Krishna and his devotees. So if we get a person who has developed that Raga, and I do Raga Nuda Bhakti, it could be a Bhakti or a also, 
that he may inspire one to take up the path of Radharuga. But then the other element is mercy of Krishna. And somehow rather we don't get that association, but we do uh, read the Bhagavatam, we develop some attraction. The mercy of Krishna is also there to help us attain that Radharuga. So, if we do Vaya Sadhana, then we, uh, we get Vaya Utta Bhava. It's a Bhava that arises from the Vaya Sadhana. And out of that, we get a Prema that arises from the Vaya Bhakti. And if we do Raghunuga Sadhana, we get a Bhava that arises from Raghunuga, and a Prema that arises from Raghunuga. So, either way, we get the Prema. But then, so the result will be slightly different. And if you do Vaya Sadhana, then we have reverence for. Krishna as Supreme Lord. If you do the Ramanuja, then we don't have that reverence. And so it's considered more intense and sweet. So Lord Chaitanya has actually stressed the Ramanuja. If you look in the Chaitanya Jarakana, there are many places where uh, Lord Chaitanya himself is emphasizing the path of Ramanuja. And it's actually considered a very quick way to advance if one can do it. So there is a, um, um, what is called the Siddha Pranali uh, system, in which this guru gives you your identity, uh, and the only one existing now is the Manjari. So the guru will give you a, an identity, and will give you a name, and so and so Manjari, you're in this group of Manjaris following this particular Saki or whatever like that. Uh, you have this particular service, you have a complexion, a certain complexion, like golden complexion or reddish or whatever like that. You have a certain color of dress, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Uh, like, so there's uh, 11 different items which are given to you for your identity. So it's called the Ekadas Bhava. And so this has become quite uh, prominent in the Raghavan Malayan. It was started originally in Puri, I think with the uh, Gopal Guru Goswami. And uh, I think after him, uh, another one was also there, someone else was there, uh, his um, disciple, uh, Jan Chandra Goswami. So they started this system of Ekadas Bhava and Puri, and that kind of spread to Bengal and then to Vrindavan. So presently, the Babaji's and Radha Kund are the ones that do the Ekadas Bhava, uh, in type of initiation, but actually separate initiation. Uh, they, and that's how they do the, 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 the person is supposed to meditate on that form, and they, they get us with 11 items in it, and he does his service to Radha and Krishna in that form, so that's called the you know, Siddha Pranali method. Okay. It's not actually mentioned either by Vishwanath Chakravarti or by Rupa Goswami, he talks about the Siddha Deha, but he doesn't give that particular process of getting your Siddha Deha. And uh, Vishnu Chakravarti talked for also in his, uh, of course, he appears a few hundred years later, uh, after John Chandra and Gopal Guru started the system. Um, but he doesn't also mention this to the Pranali even a few hundred years later. Uh, he says that you can get it from a guru, the, the identity of Siddha Deva, or from a uh, great devotee, or it can be to manifest internally by itself also. So, it's various ways it could come about. Nowadays, generally they emphasize that method, the, the Siddha Pranali method. It's the only way you can do it. <laughs> so, but that definitely is not the only way. Rupa Goswami is a mention yourself. Meditate your Siddha. It doesn't say how you get it. And of course, Lord Chaitanya said, my instructions that you acquire your fixed vow, uh, you will realize all perfections through this chanting of the holy names. No other rule than this. Another is he's saying that chant the holy name with a vow of so many rounds a day, and eventually your siddha data will manifest itself. So you can practice Raghavan. Right? You develop a certain type of um, agreed for a certain rasa, and then naturally your uh, siddha data develops. And Gaur Kajarda's body says, Your suit will be real in the syllabus of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Also, through the name, your form will be revealed. So, uh, Jiva Goswami also mentions a combined form 
if it is too difficult to do raganuga only. And then he says, one who whom this taste has not arisen, but who comes to appreciate the raganuga bhakti on account of appreciation for particular saint of scripture, may still practice raganuga with a mixture of vayu bhakti. So there's it's not completely vayu bhakti. It's got a mixture of raganuga such as hearing the pastimes or whatever like that, and uh, developing a little more attraction, even though it's not completely uh, absorbed in the mood. So uh, one could do go you know, halfway and have a mixture of <laughs> vayu and raganuga. Well, and um, actually, if we look at the Vaidhi Bhakti in the Madhva Sampradaya or the Sri Sampradaya, it is quite different from our Vaidhi Bhakti. <laughs> it is quite more dependent on the rules of scripture, etc., and you know, so following things quite exactly uh, with scriptural rules, etc. So, in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, even our Vaidhi Bhakti, as we practice it, coming through Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and Prabhupada, is is not the same, it's much influenced by the Raga of the Of course, we read Bhagavatam every day, we have Chaitanya Chaitamrita and other books as well. And then, obviously, we're concentrating on Krishna and Radha and Krishna, emphasis on that, the temples we have Radha, Krishna, deities, etc. So, yeah, there's a tendency to go forth Raga Nuga even uh, for us. Now, previously, of course, the emphasis was from almost completely on Raga Nuga and the Gaudiya Sampradaya among the Goswamis and their descendants and the caste Goswamis and the Babajis, almost completely Raghunuda. Huh? But then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, more or less, when he made his Gaudiya Mahas an institution, then uh, he didn't publicly uh, preach that. Huh? And has carried on with Shura Prabhupada also. So, um, we have the stages in Raghunuda. This is actually not mentioned in the Bhakti um, Rasa uh, Nivasuna in this chapter, but it comes up in some other works later on, I think also in the Bhakti Sangharla. Uh, so, Shravana, we hear about the pastimes. Varna, then the Guru will give you your Siddha Deva, will give you some identity. Uh, There's an interesting story in the Janta uh, Dharma. Uh, the devotee goes to the Guru, and then the Guru says, Okay, what is your preference? This or that. <laughs> so one says, okay, uh, Mandari Baba, so he gives him a Mandari Baba. Another one had an Exakya Rasa, so he gives him a Sakya Baba. Like that. So the different persons, he would give different, you know, Rasas or whatever, whatever like that. So, uh, Varana, which means acceptance. Smarna, and then once you get that identity, then you begin practicing with by in your Siddhavi, in your meditation, in your mind. And the smarna increases in intensity to dharana, and then into jnana, more continuous meditation of the pastimes and serving in your spiritual body, or your siddhadeha. Anusmriti, and then finally, samadhi, where you go for trance state, very deep meditation. And then you start serving in your spirit, actual spiritual body, in the bhava stage. You get your real spiritual body at that stage. So it's beyond raga no sadhana, alpha. And <coughs> so you get your spiritual mind, you get up. However, that's not complete because Krishna doesn't appear all the time. So the complete stage is prema. And then you get prema, you can stay in your body, and eventually your body is useless and you give up your body and just go to the spiritual world in your spiritual body and serve Krishna there. So, of course, one could also. Um, according to the different stages of bhakti, kind of map these uh, stages out somewhat. That is the uh, way. So, Shravana is the beginning stage, so we're doing sadhana, yara sadhana, with you know, basic the engagement of the senses, etc. And we go through an arc in the vritti, we reach nishta. So, when we're very steady, then we can begin to get the siddha deha, whatever, and meditate on that. And we go through smarna, etc. And then finally, uh, with the spiritual stages up to samadhi, and then we get to apana, we attain our spiritual body, and then prema, finally we get to samadhi. And then we give up our body, we just have a spiritual body with no material body at all. So, uh, as I said, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati talk or uh, gave more emphasis to the vayi aspect. Of course, there's still, as I slight Raghavan, we still there with Radha Krishna deities. <coughs> not so much emphasis on rules as we've seen in other sampradayas. But nevertheless, we put less emphasis on the Raghavan aspect. And why? Uh, because 
he was not too favor. He didn't have a favorable opinion. Many people were practicing <laughs> this Raghunuga Bhakti in Bengal and Vrindavan when he was there. He saw that it was a lot of it was um, superficial. And they get this to the day to say, Man, you have a Raghunuga Bhakti or whatever, but they would never practice. Which means, you know, internal sadhana as well as external, internal and external sadhana, but they would not really practice that internal sadhana. So it says, uh, Getting your siddha there doesn't mean that you're, you know, so exalted unless you practice it. So just by taking the label, I got my siddha there, or my siddha for now, and was, he didn't uh, think that was a very good thing to do, just to give people a label like that, and I think they're advanced because of that. And uh, because of the Raghunuga idea of, uh, you know, um, um, spontaneity and less the, uh, dependence on rules and regulations, people may tend to, become very lax in their sadhana, their external sadhana, <laughs> like chanting rounds and doing other things like that. Uh, so, and in their vows or whatever. Um, so, uh, therefore, in the beginning, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati stopped or stressed the body aspect more to get people fixed in the world. It's probably because people are coming from all sorts of backgrounds and until we get into standing where you can't get your siddha daytime, you know, you're quite fixed. So. And concentrate on the being saved. And if one concentrates on the conjugal pastimes, there's a great emphasis upon that in the Raga Nuga's practice now. And they really you know, they meditate on the pastimes and go into the Lamrata, in other words, by the uh, uh, ghost songs, etc. Uh, there are intimate pastimes there, so uh, one can begin to identify Raga and Krishna and the gopis and others with. Uh, material of the with material love affairs, and then one becomes contaminated, it's offensive, so therefore it's another problem that can arise. You commit offense by premature uh, hearing those pastimes. If it's the other rasas, of course, it wouldn't be that difficult, but with the conjugal rasa, there is that kind of difficulty. And because the, it takes a lot of time, it is more suitable for renowned persons. Of course, we do find that mainly in some of the renowned persons at Babaji's. And they practice. But then we had the Goswami lines also, who were married generally, and they carried on the genealogical lines of uh, you know, Guruship. Uh, and they also practice the Raghunuga Bhakti, so they were householders as well. Bhakti Nakaka was a householder as well. So it's not strictly for us, so generally it's more favorable for renowned persons. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And of course, it becomes much easier because you go into Ruchi and Asante. So if one obtains Ruchi and Asante, then probably you would start getting into Brahmanity quite easily. How do we identify somebody who is in Raghavaka state? Because externally people may fake him. Yeah. But how do we uh, identify that they are in Raghavaka state? Um, I would uh, then I think you're going to have to look more. Well, if he's faking it, then what would that be? That would be externally. <laughs> He would probably be showing himself off as a Raghunuga Bhakti doing spontaneous activities or something. Though well, technically, uh, Rupa Goswami has said that the externally we generally follow the Vani Bhakti principles, so it may not be detectable in that stage, you know, if he's real Raghunuga Bhakti. But internally, if he's doing internal worship, that's the only way you can tell. So then you have to see his personal worship when he's locked in his house <laughs> and not displaying himself to other people and he's meditating on the pastimes and doing all these things. That's the only way we can see it. Okay. And of course, his discussions will generally lead towards, uh, you know, the, the uh, Krishna and his pastimes and Radha, maybe, rather than other subjects. But in that aspect, the Prabhupada uh, said that we have to Progressively go towards the last day. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I said generally we emphasize the body aspect in the beginning to get people at least to finish the stage or whatever like that. Maharaj, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned about uh, 11 uh, uh, items that you would tell us things. Yeah, you can ask uh, that. Is it close to Sanjias or. Uh, no, Sanjias is something else. This is a, an approved process in the Sampradaya, but uh, was not so encouraged by Bhakti Siddhanta because it was like these rubber stamping people, okay, you're now a manjari of this, but they actually weren't even practicing it when they got, after they got the certificate, so to speak. <laughs> Sahajya is another whole other group. Uh, well, generally, we talk of Sahajya means everything you know, is kind of up a Sampradaya, that they, they think they're following Lord Chaitanya, but they have some philosophical or conduct which is not quite proper, like the owls and the balls and so many other people. But yeah, um, another, uh, the Sahaji also is kind of a limited group of, of persons also who have a particular type of belief. The philosophy is somewhat different and they don't believe in following rules and regulations so heavily and things like that. So Sahaji means easy method. <laughs> so they depend, it's something like Raghunuli once that depend more on the Baba than on following the rules and regulations. But they also get into many other, you know, not so nice activities. When we get to the bowels, they are actually quite different in their philosophy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, quite famous in Bengal and even around the world, I think they have some followers that they, they do a lot of singing and things like that, the bowel singers and whatever, but the philosophy is almost tantric. Like, and, and they have separate, in Bengal, they have like separate communities, kind of shunned by the rest of the society because they don't follow the rules and regulations, they don't have marriages and something, it's all kind of real strange in the society they live in, so it's not a normal society, it's more tantric oriented. So, and those are the bowels and the bowels and so many other groups. Yeah. Did Shri Prabhupada reveal his sin to the happy wedding to the disciples? As far as I don't know. No. Now, Bhakti Sananda in, the, in uh, biographies that his disciples have written, they kind of identify his Siddha Deha, but uh, where he got that from, I don't know. Where they get that from, I don't know, because like, who, who did he get his Siddha Deha from? All the suffer, I don't know. But Bhakti Manal Thakur definitely got through his Diksha Guru. Bhattimhari Goswami, and he mentions his Siddhi, I think, somewhere in his works or like that. So anyway, he definitely got a Siddhi Pradali, I think, from his guru. <coughs> he would have been another So, what was in I can't remember, I think. Bhakti uh, does marry I am a or something, the Bhakti the Nova. Kamala Mandar or something. So, again, the Mandari Bhakti? Yeah, yeah, it's all Mandari Bhakti. As I said, that's the only line coming down to the different groups, the Nityananda, and Janava line in general, they have that, even in spite of the fact that maybe Nityananda was in Sakshabhava, <laughs> somehow, uh, through Janava, we get maybe the, uh, the majority of Baba, Manjari Baba coming over there also. Um, 
and then most of the lines are purely Mandari Bhava. Even though technically they should be you know, the uh, Sakya Bhava, some of them, because they're followers of Nityananda, and that's an small term, <laughs> Mandari Bhava. But as I said, there was uh, some, a few works written in the Sakya Bhava also, but uh, I don't know if that was in the rally in that, or whatever. But I think that line's back. So does that mean anyone who comes in contact? Not necessarily, because we do find even more Chaitanya's group, though he emphasizes Manuria Bhava, there were people in Sakya or Vasali, or so many different Bhavas were also there, but the general tendency is towards that as the highest realization. Yeah. But of course, even in Sakya Bhava and others, generally they somehow it's related to Radha and Krishna. <laughs> you know, it's a relationship there. Maharaj, this uh, question is about Manjiri Bhava is, is it more favorable for a woman body because we are being a woman? Oh, well, we <laughs> see the men meditating on their, their siddha as, as, as a gopi or a manjari. So that's a spiritual body, not the material body. But there is a danger, like you said, there is a possibility that he become a queen and uh, if, if further degrades he may become a woman. Or? No, well, if, if, if you meditate a Mandari Bhava with reverence, you go to Dwarka and become a queen. And if you meditate uh, uh, in Raghunuga, in Vrindavan, then you would become a, a Saki or a Manjari. That's also a woman body. If you, uh, if you aspire to be a Sakya Bhava, then you attain a male body as a cowherd boy. Or if you're in uh, Matsalya Rasa, it could be either way. You could be like uh, Yasoda, a follower of Yasoda, or a follower of Nanda have a masculine or feminine body. But these are spiritual bodies, not material bodies. Yeah. yeah. If I understand correctly like, from the starting, it looks very complex for the sadhaka to actually imagine uh, like in uh, Raganaka uh, uh, Manjri Bhava. Yeah. So probably that's the reason um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or uh, our Acharyas have recommended just to focus on chanting and which Yeah, yeah. Well, that's one thing. Yeah. If you find it difficult, obviously, is that you wouldn't be able to do it until you, unless you get a very great greed for that particular identity, then it wouldn't be so difficult. If you don't have the greed, then yes, it would be very difficult. <laughs> There's one group also, another Apasampradaya, uh, they call the Saki Bekis. So they dress up like Sakis. The men, <coughs> men dress up like Sakis. <laughs> kind of, so externally they're following, not just internally. They're doing an external manifestation of the Saki. And they're dressing up like women with saris on and putting jewelry on and everything. To communicate externally also. So that's also rejected by our Acharyas. This is not a bona fide method. Not something that the Go Songs did. Maharaj, sometimes the people ask us can you show some modern day examples in this who have practiced the process and gone up to Baba or even Nishta or Nishta? Um, oh, Nishta is not so difficult. Anyone at Nishta is, uh, we can say that they are steadily doing their practice without, you know, great disturbance from the material world. Uh, beyond that, then, of course, the Ruchi and Asati, that means more intense attraction for uh, the sadhana and the process and then for Krishna himself. Huh? And then, of course, Baba means you actually realize that stage, of course, you get a static symptoms, etc. So, generally, it's come, most people are coming up with the form of the story of the initiative. Yeah, Maharaj, uh, there's You said that Bhakti Siddhanta actually didn't emphasize the Siddha Pranali method because it was like for understanding yeah. people. So, wouldn't that always have been a problem, even before his time? Because anyone could have received you know, their uh, original rupa and yeah. been rubber stamped yeah. away at any time, not yeah. just. Well, that, of course, that would depend on the discretion of the guru, I think. But then it became like a commonplace thing. You go to the guru, get initiated, and get your baba, even if they weren't so qualified. So that's that's the, what happened. Also, the guru would only give it if the person was qualified. It's not like anyone yeah. can go there and get it. Yeah, yeah. That, that should be the process. But I think it happened that they just started giving it up by freely. So that's his criticism. Yeah.
and the people that got it weren't even practicing it. <laughs> but it's more of a pride thing. It's like it's got I'm initiated or I'm not initiated. So like I got a follow up. So it's kind of like this. So it became more like a status symbol problem, which many people they take it, but they don't use it properly. So. And of course, we can say maybe that's the, the problem with the, uh, the, the lines through the Gul Swami. So it was their hereditary lines. So the, the Gurus may not be of that high quality as the line goes down because it's not based upon who's the most qualified person. It's just the, the son becomes the Guru after the father, even though he's not so qualified. So in that way, you could lose something of the real discretion of the Guru also. So they, you know, they weren't so much interested anymore after this. And of course, it also becomes, in many places, I don't know so much in the Gaudiya line, but definitely <coughs> in the lines, like in the Wallaba line, <laughs> the whole line actually uh, becomes quite wealthy. So then it's like, uh, you know, they get worship and they get gifts and they get so many things. So it's more like a business. <laughs> it's how we maintain ourselves. <laughs> we initiate people and they give us things. So, you know, it becomes a little bit materialistic also if you get that type of line going on. Uh, a similar question to one of the previous days. You said that uh, once Siddha body is revealed from father stage onward, the real one, the, the real Siddha body. So I was just wondering, how can that be revealed in a, a stage anything other than frame? Because if you're in a father stage, it means you're still not. We're not 100 perfect, right? But we can see Krishna. Krishna reveals himself. So if Christians to reveal himself, I must have spiritual senses. You can't see what the material senses. So now since my material, my spiritual body has to develop to some degree, so I can actually perceive Krishna with my eyes or smell or whatever like that. So maybe you can say it's not completely manifested, but at least it's somewhat there. Maybe it's not fully developed. So the full rasa develops in the prema, and it's like partial in Bhava stage. So Bhava is like the opening body, and then the full flower is the prema. You see that. The revelation of Krishna is like that, and also the revelation of the spiritual body. Yes. 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 Uh, just a, a different question. Like we have Gaur Vrindavan Dham, and we have Chaitanya Leela. Everybody comes in Krishna Leela, also comes in Chaitanya Leela. So does it mean we have two bodies? Two bodies? Yeah, Chaitanya Leela. <laughs> we worship both. We worship Gauranga, we worship Radha Krishna. So we can develop bodies simultaneously in two different places. It's a very good pastime in both places. <laughs> Without, you know, confusion. <laughs> because uh, Lord Chaitanya is, is an aspect of, we can say, is another face of Krishna. Ultimately. So therefore, they're not so dissimilar, so therefore one could operate in both leaders. Next goal of Vrindavan is special for this uh, Mayapur Dham as well. Mm -hmm. Any um, Jagannath Puri there? Uh, I think outside, a little further away in the Riyadhara <coughs> Pamarsa Sadhana, it's a place that uh, Puri is spiritual of the Jagannath. That's, so it's a little bit outside there, somewhere near Dwarka. Kind of. <laughs> Maybe a little bit above Dwarka because there is a little more intimacy in the worship. It's kind of like work, but I mean it's a little bit more into the familiarity of this Christian is a little bit more. Um, just relating to Prabhu's question, people sometimes ask, um, are there any devotees that we know of in Islam who are at the or even praying my stage, mm -hmm. and if, if so, how do you know? Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, then how do you know that that guru is qualified to take other people that can go there? So, mm -hmm. yeah. how would you? Well, uh, 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 proceeding in uh, bhakti requires a guru, but a guru could be at any level. Um, so, if uh, he's a praying bhakta, generally, the praying bhaktas don't preach. And it's the Madhi Madhi Kharis who are the preachers. Uh, and because, the, of course, he doesn't see differences between demons and devotees or anything. 
and he's absorbed in Krishna's pastimes, so he doesn't want to be disturbed in that, so he wouldn't take many of that away at all. And, and you may not define him, <laughs> because he doesn't act like an ordinary person. He doesn't. He's not a socialite. He's not mingling in society. You know, he may act like a madman, unable to control himself. You know? Uh, completely like Lord Chaitanya and Puri, you know, he would fall in the ocean or whatever, expand his body, contract his body, so all full of ecstatic symptoms, etc. And completely absorbed in Krishna. So not too easy to communicate with the external world. That's the most case. But I mean, if you examples like, we see examples like Martin and Narada Muni, he's in the highest level, but he goes out and preaches. So there are exceptions also. Anyway, that's one thing, but the idea is that. Um, it's not really necessary to have a praying bhakta for someone who's beginning bhakti and is only going to progress so much in his lifetime anyway. When the need arises, definitely the devotee will be there to guide the particular person to the next stage or the next stage or the next stage. And to get to prema may take many lifetimes. In the case of Bharat Maharaj, he got to Bhava in one lifetime and he was actually descended from Manu. But then the next lifetime you came dear. The next lifetime you got prema. So from Baba to prema to go three lifetimes. So how long it takes for us to get to Baba stage? <laughs> Maybe you're more lifetimes than that even. Because <laughs> we don't come from Manu's line either, <laughs> from Bharat's line. So it may take us longer to even to get to Baba stage. So uh, therefore we don't really require that guru at the beginning stages when we're going through many lifetimes or just doing sadhana bhakti, getting to an art or a or whatever. But when the need arises, uh, Krishna makes the arrangement for every devotee so to get the guidance where necessary. And that goes for Raghavan Nuli, if one wants to practice Raghavan then a person can guide him and actually manifest. 